Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Skaven Doom Wheel, which you can see here. This is a rare choice for the Skaven for Games Workshop's Warhammer Fantasy Skaven Army, a race of underground dwelling rat men with dreams of world domination. So let's take a look at the Doom Wheel. Here we are. But da uh, this is a relatively new kit. It came out just a year or two ago. It's plastic. Puts together absolutely wonderfully. My only recommendation is to magnetize this uh, banner right here because uh, that is a sensitive uh, point and it can break away when it's being uh, brought to or from storage. So, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. First off, uh, the model has strength and toughness 6 with 5 wounds and it is crewed with a warlock engineer. That's the rider inside. In fact, let's take another look at that. There he is. And he's got a little helper there, but it doesn't matter. It's a single combined profile of a whole lot of all the same. The Doom Wheel has an armor of 4 plus. Pretty decent. Is immune to psychology. Uh, gives impact hits like a chariot, although technically it's not a chariot. It is a large target and causes terror. Isn't that awesome? So first off, uh, it maneuvers like a chariot, uh, except for a few things, which is that it has a random movement, which is done in the compulsory moves phase. And that means uh, what you do is you pick a direction that you want the doom wheel to go in and it goes in that direction. So you go ahead and turn it and you roll your 3d6 like this. Uh, in this case I rolled a 4, a 1, and a 1. So that would mean that the doom wheel would move 6 inches in the chosen direction. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here we go. So it would move 6 inches. Now, let's say you had uh, two targets for your Doom Wheel and you uh, wanted to charge or at least ram into because technically you don't declare a charge even though uh, it does count as charging. So let's say one of these units was six inches away and the other one was eight inches away. Well, you couldn't roll the dice and then decide which way to go. You would have to turn your doom wheel, pick one, and charge in that, or uh, rather randomly move in that direction. Now, if your doom wheel runs into difficult ground, uh, excuse me, difficult or very difficult ground, it takes some hits. So uh, a forest here, and we're counting these, uh, these flats, as a forest, even though they're populated by these stone pieces. Favorite terrain trick of mine. It, the question is, is that difficult ground? Well, according to the rule book, a forest is, hold on a second, uh, a chariot model must take a dangerous terrain test if it moves into a forest. But the question is, is the Doom Wheel a chariot? This says it on, only that it maneuvers like a chariot with a few exceptions. But no matter, even if it were, it would take D3 strength 4 hits. And as you'll see, that's basically nothing. You roll a D3, so we take one hit. Let's say he takes two. It would be strength 4 versus toughness 6, so it needs 6s to wound. And in that case, it would be no wounds. But even if it got one wound, it would... Um, it would uh, still get an armor save of five. So the chances of actually being hurt at all by the Doom Wheel ramming through a forest is almost negligible. And so, uh, but if it hits a building or impassable terrain, like let's say this big old uh, rock cliff thing, crunch, it would, take, it would take D6 strength 10 hits. And now, now that's bad, it could actually really be crashed by that. So, let's move on. Now, the Doom Wheel, let's say it hits an enemy unit, so I turn the Doom Wheel, 
I say, all right, it's moving forward randomly. And I rolled nine inches. Well, that's only like five inches. Yep, that's right. So it hits the forest. And right now, I don't know if it takes the hits from forests or not. Because the only question is, is a forest difficult or very difficult ground? Well, that may or may not be the case in 8th edition. I did print out the FAQ before doing this, and there is no sort of clarification here. And so I will defer to the jury on that one, but let's say it does. Let's say I'm giving my opponent a sporting chance. I would take three strength four hits against toughness six, six is to wound. I would receive no wounds and crunch. Now what happens? In combat, the Doom Wheel would uh, first make impact hits of D6 plus one. So here's goblins. Wow, awesome. That's six. Don't know if you can read that from that distance. So strength six versus toughness three is two ups. I would wipe out uh, six goblins. I'm sorry, uh, D6 plus one. Oh, rolled a one. So I'd wipe out six goblins just in the initial crunch. Math Hammer says three or four guys are going down. And then I would make attacks at my regular initiative of four. And the attacks are random. You roll 2d6, and that represents all the attacks by everything on here. It all is the same. It's uh, strength two, weapon skill three. So against the goblins, I need four, st uh, excuse me, I get 2d6 attacks, seven, perfectly average. And then I would roll my attacks. I need four ups to hit, typically. Look at that, just about half. And it's only strength two. That is an important thing to note. They are not very strong of an attack. I need five ups, so I would amazingly inflict two wounds. Usually you're only gonna get one or two wounds from this. The goblins would make their saves from, say, light armor or shield or whatever they have, and they do nothing. So against a unit like this, a very lightly armored, low toughness unit, you're usually going to score uh, between three and six wounds, and that's not bad. Now, I did this particular scenario a little out of order. I jumped right to melee. What would really happen is a compulsory movement phase. The Doom Wheel would choose its direction, roll its 3d6 inches, take its hits for entering a forest. By the way, jury is still out if they take the hits for that. Forests may or may not be difficult or very difficult ground. And uh, because the Doom Wheel, I'm not sure if it's a chariot, actually. Okay, the jury is possibly in. If you look in the back of the 8th edition rulebook, you'll see that under the Skaven section, the Doom Wheel is listed as unit type UN, which is unique. And that means maybe only maneuvers like a chariot in certain ways and does not necessarily fall under the movement rules for a chariot treating forests as dangerous terrain. So, let us continue. I would hit them, but then it would be the shooting phase. So during the shooting phase, the lightning bolts come out. They hit the closest thing within 18 inches, and that can be an enemy unit in base-to-base -base contact. Uh, that's under the zap rules. So in each friendly shooting phase, even when engaged in close combat, the Doom Wheel fires three bolts of lightning. And if it doesn't want to shoot the lightning, for example, if, it has, if it's gone out of control and impacted a friendly unit, like let's say it had, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute, if it had crunched into these uh, clan rats here, it would want to restrain. You would take a leadership test on 2d6. Uh, that would be an 11, so that would be a failed leadership test. So out come the lightning bolts. First off, you determine uh, if they're in range. They have an 18-inch range. They strike the nearest unit, friend or foe. You measure from the Doom Wheel's base. And it's possible for the first unit to die from the very first bolt. And so you have to roll the bolts one at a time, unless, for example, in this case, there was no chance of killing the entire unit. So here comes the strength of the bolts. Strength is eight, so I would wound on two ups. There'd be one wound, two wounds, three wounds. So isn't that lovely? Now, 
Let's say, let's take a more complicated scenario, shall we? All right, so, uh, but just to wrap up, against the goblins, you saw how it would have worked. You would have rolled your random distance, uh, encountered any obstacles or difficult terrain, and you would have done the lightning bolts, and then the impact hits, and then the regular attacks in shooting and close combat, respectively. Now, let's take a look at the Doom Wheel as if it were sitting right here, which in this particular game it is sitting here. And as you may notice, I have a Arachnorok Spider. I have a Orc Boar Boy Chariot, and I have this unit of goblins here. Now the lightning is particularly good against large targets, so let's go ahead and assume this Arachnorok, say we're pointing this direction, and was a threat. And my Doom Wheel was right here. So. Now, the question is, which direction do I want to go? And uh, th that can be determined by a lot of different factors. Maybe I want to hit the goblins and uh, make, them, make them flee. Somehow there's a tactical thing. But quite frankly, I would probably try and get the lightning to hit these two guys right here and possibly wipe out both of them in one single amazing shot. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say the Arachnorok, in this case, only has one wound left. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and get just a little bit closer to the Arachnorok. So I'm going to point this way. I'm going to roll my 3d6. I'm going to remember on 3d6, your average is going to be 10 or 11 inches. So you could measure out 10 and a half inches and say, well, I'm most likely to end up right there. And be careful where you point, because if I pointed this way towards the Arachnorok directly, I would likely end up in close combat with him, and none of the, well, the lightning bolts actually could blow him up and then go on to the thing. So that actually is a slightly better move now that I think about it, depending on where I want to end up in close combat. So very interesting. So let's go ahead and roll the dice. I get a six, a six, and a four, which is an astounding 16 inches. I measure that out. See, that's more than enough to get into the Arachnorok. Now let's fast forward to shooting phase, and we're going to generate my lightning bolts. Now I can restrain, but of course I don't want to because the closest unit is an enemy unit. I roll for strength. I roll a 10, strength 10. Awesome. And now I'm going to whop out my lightning bolts. So strength 10 versus toughness 6, I do believe. Don't quote me on that. So lightning bolt number one comes out, and the reason I'm rolling them one at a time is the lightning could kill that and then start zapping into other items here. Uh, I roll a one, so that does no wound. The second one, I roll a six, so it does a wound, so the Arachnorok would now get to save. Strength 10 is minus six to the armor, so there's no save, but sometimes things have regeneration saves or whatever it is. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that into D6 wounds. I'm going to get six wounds. Wow, I'm on a roll. I hope I roll this well in my real game. And now the Arachnorok is blown up, so this would go away. Kaboom. I just need to uh, put down a marker here because we are in the middle of a game and I have to remember where everything is. And so now I would see where do the lightning bolts go? Where does that last lightning bolt go? I definitely don't want to be closer to the goblins, so I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to measure and see which one is closer. The chariot is nine inches away, and the goblins are six inches away. So unfortunately, I do not get the desired effect. The goblins are closer, and so the last lightning bolt would fry one of the goblins. Now, how could I have done that differently or better? Let's rewind. Pull my doom wheel back like that. Put the Arachnorok back on the table, threateningly. Er, I'm mean, I'm a mean old Arachnorok. And so what's interesting is that now the reason I did that way the first time is what if the lightning bolts came out of strength two or a misfire? Well, I would want my impact hits for my doom wheel to kill that Arachnorok. And so I was really hedging my bets. So with the benefit of hindsight, looking at the 10 strength, I would have done it differently. But another way to do it would have been to take another risk. Let's say the doom wheel is a little bit like that. So uh, I would want to get kind of mid closer to these guys than the goblins. So let's go ahead and roll my distance. And oh, awesome, a five, a three, and a six puts me 
14 inches. So I'll measure out 14 inches. Now in this alternate timeline, I'm not getting closer to the arachnorock. I'm going like that. Aha! So now, let's roll. So now, which guy, which one am I even closer to? I'm two inches away from the arachnorock, three inches away from the boar chariot. And here we go. I'm going to roll up my strength of lightning bolts. I'm going to roll a two. And by the way, that can still do something. So I start rolling them one at a time. Strength two versus the arachnorock. I need a six to wound. That's nothing, nothing, and nothing. Lightning bolts do nothing. And that's sometimes how it goes with the doom wheel. It can be incredibly dangerous or an incredible fizzle. Let's back up timelines just a minute and roll again. This, oh, misfire. Okay, so let's see what happens. We go to our doom wheel misfire chart and we would roll a D6. A one is disaster. Doom wheel immediately takes D strength, strength six hits. By the way, that is not the end of the world. I would take three strength six hits. Toughness is six, so four ups. I would take two wounds from that and I would not get an armor save. So um, from now on, roll one less D6 for the Doom Wheel's movement. And then you can also get out of control or a six, which is possibly good, which is burst of speed. So, all right, let's back up the timelines again and roll for my strength one more time. Oh, that's a two. Okay, an eight, let's call it strength eight. So now I would do the first bolt against the closest target. That's the Arachnorok. I need a two and I'm going to roll a four. So that's a wound. No save for the Arachnorok. D6 wounds. Six wounds is enough to blow that up. And now bolt number two goes on to the chariot. Let's go ahead and move in so you can see the die rolls a little bit better. Chariot I do believe is toughness five. So I still need a two up. No save. D6 wounds is three wounds. The chariot has four, and the third lightning bolt would wound, D6 wounds would blow the chariot up. So as you can see, the doom wheel is hit or miss, but it is a giant threat. And with toughness six and a four up save it is, and five wounds, it definitely has a lot of, a lot of hitting power. Excuse me, it has a lot of staying power and is a, is, a, is a real threat. And you just have to be careful with those lightning bolts. Uh, what, now if you're facing a doom wheel, what does the doom wheel not like to fight against? It is ranked units of troops. Because even regular troops, like these goblins here, can possibly, with uh, massed ranks, say uh, there's eight attacks coming back, can possibly get off one hit and with a banner and three ranks, you can win against the Doom Wheel in combat. It's only leadership seven. That is how to take care of the Doom Wheel. It's with cheap massed ranked troops, both as a shield and as a, uh, both as a shield to actually get in the way of more valuable units uh, so the lightning bolts can't hit you, but also to actually defeat the Doom Wheel because, uh, the, and then in subsequent rounds, from round two and on, the Doom Wheel's even more of a, at a disadvantage against massed ranks of troops because it's only getting 2d6 strength to attacks, which only one in like six is going to hit, so, uh, excuse me, is going to wound, so you end up really with only one or two wounds coming at you from the Doom Wheel in regular close combat. Oh, although it does continue to have impact hits every turn, D3 impact hits. So, yeah, I guess that was a little closer than I thought. So let's take a look at some of the errata for the Doom Wheel. The first one is, in each friendly shooting phase, even when engaged in close combat or when fleeing, the Doom Wheel unleashes three bolts of lightning. So that means that even when the Doom Wheel's fleeing, it's still shooting that lightning. Uh, that can be very bad for the Skaven, especially if the Doom Wheel's coming back towards your lines. And uh, also it says uh, in out of control, if the Doom Wheel is, oh, change the first sentence of the out of control result to if the Doom Wheel is unengaged, it immediately makes a random move in a random direction. And that is part of the rules I did not discuss because I'm kind of wrapping this up. 
it is that if the doom wheel takes a wound, uh, and if an unengaged doom wheel takes a wound, so that's from shooting or magic typically, you roll a d6 for each wound, and on a one it goes out of control. And let's see here. Yep, that's, that's basically your old doom wheel. So I hope that you have enjoyed and got something useful out of this. Thank you.